Welcome to the first of four videos showing you how to use the Core Knowledge Middle School Math Curriculum. Now my goal is to help you be successful using this high quality and free curriculum to homeschool. Now to do that though, we're gonna need to go over quite a bit of information. So I'm gonna break that up into four videos so hopefully nothing feels too overwhelming. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how the curriculum works and I'll go over various aspects of the curriculum so you can decide if this is a good fit for your family. Then in the second video, I'll show you the different resources you'll be downloading for free from Core Knowledge, including the teacher's guide, the student book, and several other key resources you'll be using. In video three, we'll take a detailed tour of that teacher's guide. Now, this curriculum was designed to be used in a classroom. So in that third video, I'm also gonna show you different sections so you'll understand which sections are important to review as a homeschooler and which can be skipped. Okay, and finally, in that last video, I'll walk you through an example lesson. Almost all the lessons in this curriculum have the similar flow to them, so we'll do a deep dive and get you familiar with how a lesson works so you can be in the best position to use this curriculum on a daily basis. I am so excited to show you this new math curriculum. Core Knowledge develops such excellent materials that so nicely align with what cognitive research tells us about how humans learn best. Now, before we start, two things. First, the Core Knowledge curriculum I'm going to show you today is free to download from the Core Knowledge Foundation's website. These are downloadable PDF files, um, and you can easily view them on a tablet or a laptop, and you'll even be able to print them if you need to. At the time I'm recording this video, about half the units for each grade, so that's sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, um, about half those units are available to download. For example, on the screen here, these are the four units for sixth grade that are currently available. Uh, the information in these videos, though, covers the math curriculum for all of middle school, as, um, as well as the resources, um, because the resources are ultimately laid out in the same way. Okay, so next, be sure to visit my website. It's homeschoolworkplans.com. I have grade specific organization guides and a unit specific checklist for this math curriculum as well. Um, I also have those same resources for core knowledge, language arts, science, and the history and geography curriculums. Um, I have daily schedules on there. I have supply checklists available for homeschoolers and all of those materials on my site are available for free because my goal is to take the guesswork and expense out of providing your students with a high quality education at home. Okay, so let's dive in and get started. So my goal with this video is to give you a thorough overview of this curriculum so you can understand the basics of how it's structured. So let's start with a few basic things. Okay, first, unlike most math curriculums out there, this curriculum is divided into units and a grade level will likely consist of seven to nine units. Okay, so I say likely consist because I don't know for sure. Um, only about half of the units for each grade level are currently available. I am recording this in July of 2022. So I'm making a bit of an educated guess here based on what's publicly available information-wise from core knowledge. Um, so I'm just taking a guess, probably seven to nine units by the time they're done for each grade level. But regardless of how many units it ends up being, um, there are going to be multiple units for every grade. You'll use them in order, and each unit is clearly divided into lessons, and you'll just do one lesson a day. So, so don't worry about the units. You're just going to do one lesson a day. It's not difficult. I just want you to be aware when you go to the Core Knowledge website, you're going to need to download multiple units to cover a grade level. Next. It's going to become obvious pretty quickly that this curriculum was designed to be used in a classroom setting. The Core Knowledge Foundation is working towards the goal of improving the quality of a U.S. public school education, which is such a noble goal. Uh, but as a practical matter, the most common users of this curriculum seem to be charter schools and private schools. So my focus in these videos, as well as with all the resources on my website, is to help you adjust this curriculum to make it work as a homeschooling family. All right, finally. If you're new to the Core Knowledge curriculum in general, this is a free downloadable curriculum. All the materials can be downloaded as PDF files directly from the Core Knowledge website, and you'll be able to view those files on a tablet. You can also print them if you need to. When you get to the second video, I'll get very explicit with you about what files you'll need to print and which ones you don't need to print, and then that info is also available in written form on my website, homeschoolworkplans.com. Okay, quick side note here. 
If you've used other grade levels or subjects in the core knowledge curriculum, um, you may have decided to purchase hard copies of some of the materials instead of relying on the free downloads. Um, core knowledge does sell hard copies for a lot of their curriculum if, if you want to do that. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, there are no hard copies of the math curriculum available to purchase from the core knowledge website. I suspect that those will be available at some point. So definitely go check. Maybe when you're watching this video, they're, they're there for you. Um, at the moment though, we're all going to be relying on those free downloads files. Now, if you're a veteran homeschooler, I know you have some questions about the style of this curriculum. So we're going to talk about that now. If you're new to homeschooling, this is still good info for you to be aware of, though. All right, so first up, math curriculums typically fall into two categories, mastery and spiral. Now, a loose definition of a mastery curriculum would be one that teaches a topic, let's say multiplying fractions, and then it teaches that topic thoroughly and then moves on to the next topic. There's review built into the lessons or stopping points of previous topics are reviewed, but they aren't typically covered fully again. Now, with a spiral curriculum, a topic is typically introduced, then the lessons spiral back to that topic a number of times in subsequent lessons, um, in addition to review problems to practice a concept. So these are just two different styles of teaching math. If you're new to homeschooling, you're likely about to find out that homeschoolers kind of love to talk about different styles of curriculum. So I wanted to be clear up front for anyone who needs this information that this curriculum from Core Knowledge is a mastery style curriculum. Um, topics are taught in blocks and they're taught thoroughly and then about half the practice problems for the day are the new topic and about half review previous topics. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, this curriculum is divided into units with a very clear theme. So for example, the teacher's guide you see here on the screen is for the third unit for sixth grade and the focus of this unit is rates and percentages. But to reiterate, even though the curriculum is divided into topics, the daily practice problems in subsequent lessons and unit review um, and units review the concepts taught in previous lessons and, and units. Okay, so they are getting that review built into every lesson. So the next three items here on the slide are really important. And honestly, I think these are what make this curriculum both exciting and unique in terms of what options have been available to homeschoolers for those middle school grades. A few weeks ago, when I first started digging through this curriculum, my first thought was, oh my goodness, what sort of magic is this? <laughs> uh, followed by wishing I could have taken this class as a middle school student. So here's the deal. First, this curriculum has a really nice balance between the discovery method of learning and explicit teaching. So discovery method means that students are given a chance to look at a figure or problem and then spend some time really trying to figure out how to solve it. Ideally, this involves some discussion, either with another student or in a homeschooling setting, that discussion would probably happen with you as the instructor. Now, when we do a detailed walkthrough of a lesson in the fourth video, you'll see that this discovery method is typically used in the warm-up portion of the lesson. But the lessons also include explicit teaching of concepts, and that's something that's really important from a cognitive science perspective. All right, that leads me to the next significant feature of this curriculum. It's fully scripted. I know many of you just panicked a bit a moment ago when I said, oh, explicit teaching. <laughs> you may have started to question whether you are in a position to explicitly teach middle school math concepts, because let's face it, some of us, me for example, um, are better with other subjects, <laughs> maybe writing and history. But never fear, this curriculum is fully scripted, and that means it explicitly tells you, as the instructor, what to tell your student and how to explain concepts. It even includes very detailed written explanations for the pro answers to the problems. So even down to information about common mistakes or misconceptions students might have. I was so excited when I saw those. Um, even So even if you're not a math person, or maybe it's just been a while since you've seen many of these concepts, it's okay, this curriculum is gonna hold your hand the whole way. All right, and finally, again, very exciting here. This is very much a hands-on curriculum. The lessons use standard math manipulatives. Um, so those are uh, 
you know, small things like little blocks here on the screen that, that students can hold on to and use to help them think through concepts, okay? So the math manipulatives that are used in this program are the kind you buy on Amazon, okay? There's nothing proprietary or hard to find or expensive. If you've looked at other hands-on curriculums that are on the market, you may have noticed a lot of them use manipulatives that you have to buy from them and expensive doesn't even begin to cover it. Um, but that's not the case with this. You'll be able to buy inexpensive math manipulatives online, no problem. All right, the curriculum also includes printed resources like coming off your printer. <laughs> I'll show you those in the next video, um, like a sheet with 3D shapes that they'll cut out and fold and really dig into the concept of surface area. There's also a large amount of real life skills and scenarios built in, so much so that there are lessons that really look a lot more like an excellent science curriculum rather than a standard math curriculum. So for example, in one sixth grade unit, there's a number of cooking examples, as well as a hands-on demonstration involving food coloring and water. I think that's a ratio lesson, if I remember correctly. Um, so mainly these demonstrations use household items, um, things you're likely to already have around. And this is the most engaging and fun math curriculum I've seen for middle school. And what blows my mind is that it's academically rigorous and the curriculum is free. So this is the best of all the worlds. Okay, before I move on, I do want to put in a quick note here, because again, some of you just panicked a bit. <laughs> Hands-on means supplies and moving pieces and math manipulatives and so forth. So yes, this program is going to require more organization than most math options out there, but arguably it's probably worth it. Um, I do want to assure you I'm going to make this as easy as I can for you. I've already dug through all the units. I've made you a detailed list of supplies you'll need broken out by unit, even by lesson. So you'll be ready to go each school day. And all of those resource, um, the resources, that document is just on my website. It's free to download. All right, so what does this look like from a practical perspective? All right, first, it's important to understand that this math curriculum must be actively taught to the students. All of the teaching for and all the instructions basically are located in the teacher's guide. There's not information explaining concepts or detailed instructions on the student work sheet. All that's in the teacher's guide. So on the left here is a page from the teacher's guide. On the right is a page from the student book. Okay, so two things jump out here. First, this isn't a math curriculum. You're going to be able to just sit down and hand your student, right? You'll, or excuse me, you'll just won't be able to hand it to your student. You're going to have to sit down and teach the lesson each day. So I'm going to more on that in a second, okay? I do want to point out a big benefit though here before we move on. Look at all that white space on that student worksheet on the right. One problem I'm seeing come up a lot right now in homeschooling groups online is more and more um, parents and students are getting frustrated and overwhelmed because of the amount of information on worksheets. This just seems to be a growing problem for some reason. Um, and at the middle school level, there just aren't very many curriculum options that keep the number of problems on a sheet limited. So I was just really excited to see this. It's just always lovely to see good design in action. All right, so let's talk more in detail about the time commitment because this is really important, isn't it? As homeschooling parents, we have to be very thoughtful about how we're spending our time. Most of us have jobs or the other thing, other commitments in our lives besides sitting down and teaching our kids every day. Okay, so you'll see here that typically you'll want to spend a few minutes reviewing the lesson, scanning through the info, and then 20 to 25 minutes directly teaching your students the concepts. When we do a detailed walkthrough of a lesson in the fourth video, you'll see that the lessons are broken up into four sections and you'll be working with your student to understand the concepts and work through practice problems. After that, your student's gonna, going to spend 15 to 25 minutes working independently on the practice problems for the day. And then finally, and very importantly, don't skip this, uh, you'll need a few minutes um, to review their work, checking their answers so they can correct the problems and providing them any explanations as needed. Okay, as a reminder, I mentioned this a few minutes ago, the scripted nature of this curriculum extends down to detailed explanations and common misperceptions for, um, misconceptions for answers to the practice problems. So even if you're relearning these concepts yourself, the teacher's guide is gonna hold your hand so you can help your student understand where they made that error and how to resolve it. Okay, before we move on, I wanna make a quick note about these times I have up here. These times are where you'll land. 
Okay, when you first start any curriculum, it takes a while to learn how to use it. That is okay. That makes you and your student normal, okay? So it might take you longer those first few days or weeks, but this is these are the time slots that I would generally plan on long-term. Once you've kind of gotten the rhythm of things and you and your student are working well together. All right. Now, as high quality as this curriculum is, the fact that, and the fact that it's free, which is great, um, it's still not going to be a fit for every student or every family. So let's talk through a few factors here. I want you to be able to make the best decision for your family. Okay, so first up, this per curriculum is probably going to work well for you if you're interested in deep conceptual learning. The focus of the lessons is really on helping students understand the why and the how behind math and numbers and how those numbers relate to each other. And that establishes a solid base of skills. It would be hard to overstate how useful that is for students as they proceed to higher levels of math. All right, this curriculum is probably gonna work well for you if you have time to actively teach math as a subject. Similar to other core knowledge middle school curriculum subjects, so their language arts and their science, um, their history and geography, there's going to be a portion of each lesson that will need to be actively taught. You're generally going to be looking at 30 to 40 minutes a day for this math curriculum where you're going to need to be sitting next to your student, working with them on the material, correcting their work, that sort of thing. All right, next. This curriculum is almost hard to explain because it's this amazing mix of a hands-on math curriculum, like the few that are currently available on the market, and what you'd imagine a high-quality science curriculum looking like, okay? But that does mean that there's a lot of moving pieces. You know, there's math manipulatives you'll need to have on hand, and some lessons will call for other household-type items for demonstration. And so it does take more organization than most math curriculums. You'll need to gather the math manipulatives before the start of the school year. You wanna store them together so you can easily grab them during the lessons. You're gonna to need to look ahead a bit, um, maybe a week or two ahead and see if you need to pull other items together from around the house um, or something from the grocery store. And remember, I, I've, you know, I've put together documentation. So as you as a homeschooler, there's cheat sheets on my website for you so that you can download those and see what you need. Um, but you'll you'll work with this curriculum better if you tend to be more organized, just honestly. Um, so you can still use it. I mean, like me, if you lack intrinsic organization skills, <laughs> um, you can absolutely use this curriculum. Just know that you and I are going to have to put more effort into this one uh, to, to achieve the organization you'll need to use this successfully. Okay, next up. You're probably going, uh, this curriculum is probably going to work well for you if you love math. You're probably going to love, love, love this curriculum. <laughs> the concepts are taught so deeply and with clear ties to how math relates to our world. It really is beautiful. Okay, but what if math isn't your thing? So the good news is that this curriculum is also a good fit for homeschoolers who need a detailed script and support info to successfully teach math. This is by far the best option I've seen in terms of holding your hand and walking you through presenting each lesson. All right, so let's flip the script a bit here and talk about who this curriculum might not be the best fit for. Not all curriculum is the best fit for every family. That's okay. All right, first, if your student needs remediation, um, so that is they don't have a solid grasp of elementary school math concepts. They still need to learn some of those or really in-depth review of some of those. Um, if your student's in that situation, this is probably not the best place to start them. Now, the first unit for sixth grade is pretty gentle. Um, it, it assumes kids have been off for the summer. So, you know, it's, it's gentle. <laughs> um, but it's still diving right into what are middle school math concepts. So if your student is shaky on foundational concepts, that's going to be a tough road. Now, if you're unsure of whether your student has the important background knowledge, you can refer to the scope and sequence document for the Core College website. I would encourage you to look specifically at the new scope and sequence that's uh, being released now in 2022, okay? So you're gonna take a look at that, it's free to download from them. You'll wanna look specifically at the math concepts they have listed for fourth and fifth grade. Those will be the things you'll want to be sure your student is solid on before they start the sixth grade curriculum. Uh, they also have information on there for you know what's taught in sixth and seventh grade. So if you're starting in seventh or eighth grade with this curriculum, again, you'll be able to see what they should already know. All right. 
Next, some kids need a lot of practice and repetition to learn concepts, and that's okay. If that's what they need, that's what should be available to them. So the one concern I do have with this curriculum is that while there is practice built into every school day, it's not a huge amount of practice. Now, for some kids, I would argue for most kids, this is actually going to be a great fit. There's, there, isn't, um, there isn't any busy work at all in this curriculum. Um, but some kids are going to need more. So if your student needs lots of practice and you still really want to use this curriculum, I'd recommend using a workbook from a different um, curriculum company for additional practice on top of the lessons in this curriculum. So you might go get a workbook from just another completely separate curriculum and just use that for practice. Now, there are a few curriculums that have workbooks like that that might work well for that. And I'm going to add that to my list of blog posts that I'm supposed to write and get up on the website. Um, so hopefully soon I will have something up on uh, the blog on my website to kind of guide you through what, you know, might be some good choices there. All right. Um, this curriculum does include supplies, as I mentioned earlier. So let's face it, that's really unusual for a math curriculum. And it adds this amazing depth to the lessons. And I've attempted to get this all organized for you with cheat sheets, but not every family is set up to handle moving pieces like that. And honestly, no judgment. We are all doing the best we can here. Okay, and finally, this is simply not a math curriculum you can hand your student and walk away. Again, every family is doing the best they can. I'm recording this in the middle of 2022. Life is kind of rough right now, and it might not get better for a bit. So if you need videos to teach your student or you need them to self-teach to a certain extent, this isn't going to be the right curriculum for that. Um, remember, in the end, the best curriculum for your student and for your family is going to be the one that gets done every day. And it's OK if it's not this one. OK. So before we move on to video number two, here is just the quick info on how to download the curriculum directly from the Core Knowledge Foundation. Now remember, there will be multiple units for each grade level, and you'll be downloading all the available files for each unit. And that will include the teacher's guide, the student book, and the teacher resources file. Um, if you visit my website or my YouTube channel, I do have a short how-to video that walks you through step-by-step -step exactly how to download curriculum files from Core Knowledge. It's a little bit tricky at first once you get the hang of it. You, you know, you'll be a pro pretty quick. Okay, so that's it for this video. Next up in video number two, I'm going to walk you through the resources you'll be downloading and using to teach your student. That includes the teacher's guide, the student book, and this folder of a ton of files known as the teacher resources. Now, as a homeschooler, thankfully, you won't need everything in those download files. And so I'm going to help you sort out what you will and won't use, um, what needs to be printed, that sort of thing. We'll also take a look at the homeschool specific support resources I put together for you that you can download from my website. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll see you in a few minutes in video number two.